Number one has us putting um, the following expressions in order from least to greatest. And so we see that we've got bases of E and also two. So let's remember what um, the number E is. So remember that E is equal to about 2.71. And so we'll use that to help us um, figure out some of these answers. So um, a base of E is larger than a base of two. And so like this one is two times a little bit less than three. So this is two times 2.71. So this one is gonna be less than um, six if we're looking at this. Um, and this one is going to be exactly equal to four, okay? This is like three to the third or less than that, right? So three to the third is gonna be 27. So this one's less than 27. Three to the second um, would be nine. So this one is less than nine since it's 2.71 to the second. And then this one is almost like three to the third, um, but definitely less than three to the, less than the third. So this one's gonna be even lower than probably this one because this one's less than three to the third. This one's less than three to the less than three. Um, so as we're putting these in order, I would say two to the second would be the smallest, right, at four. Um, and then we have two times almost three, okay? So this is gonna be bigger than four, but less than um, six. Then e to the second, okay, because that one's gonna be less than nine. Then out of these two right here, Okay, we've got less than three to the third, and then we've got less than three to the less than three. So e to the e is going to be smaller than e to the third. Here are the graphs of three functions, um, two to the x, e to the x, and three to the x. And then we want to figure out which graphs are which. So when we're looking at these bases, right? So all of them are to the X power. So what we're focused on is their bases here. So, and these bases being their growth factor. So this one has a growth factor of two. E is a growth factor of like 2.71. And then we have a growth factor of three. So this one has the highest growth factor. And so this one means that it's gonna be growing the fastest out of the three of them. So that's gonna be this one here that gets bigger or is taller faster. So then the one that's got the smallest growth factor is going to be the shortest one or the one that grows the least quickly. And that's this two to the X, okay? Cause that's the smallest growth factor. And then um, e to the x would be between those, since 2.71 is between a growth factor of 2 and 3. Number three, which of the statements is true about the function f given that 100 times e to the, um, given that the function is 100 times e to the negative x? Select all that apply. So the y-intercept of the graph would be 0, 100. So remember, y-intercept um, is where the x-coordinate is 0. So we're good with that. And then you would just plug 0 into here. Well, 0 times um, negative 1 is 0, and e to the 0 is 1. 100 times 1 is 100. So this one is true. B, the values of f increase when x increases. So if this, um, if our x value was going up, say we plug in two and then we plug in three and then we plug in four, are these numbers getting bigger? And that's gonna be false because this is a negative exponent. So they're actually gonna be decreasing because this will end up, um, negative exponents will end up putting these as a fraction in the denominator. So we'd get 100 times one over e to the second, or 100 times one over e to the third. Um, and so those are gonna be decreasing in value. So B would not be correct. 
the value of f when x equals negative 1 is a little bit less than 40. So if we put negative 1 in here, and um, if we do that, that's going to be 100 times e to the first, right? Because we'll have negative times negative 1. And so this is going to be 100 times 2.71. So this is going to get larger than 100. So that would be a false statement. D, the value of F when X equals 5 is less than 1. So it's going to be 100 times E to the negative fifth, which means that it's going to be like 100 times 1 over E to the fifth. And so this one is going to be a true statement if you plugged that in. And you could certainly um, like put that into your calculator to figure that out. Um, and then the value of F is never zero. That is true because this would just keep being one over something. And so this is never, um, going to equal zero because this part will never equal zero. So we're never going to get 100 times zero in this. And so E would be a true statement as well. Number four, suppose you have $1 to put in an interest bearing account for one year and you're offered different options for interest rates and compounding frequencies, how, which is how often the interest is calculated. And then that's going to be shown in this table. The highest interest rate is 100% calculated once a year. The lower the interest rate, the more often it gets calculated. So complete this table with expressions that represent the amount you will have after one year. So I have an interest rate of 100% compounded once a year, that's gonna be this. Um, so then after a year, if we type this into our calculator, we would have $2. Now, if the interest rate is 10%, we're going to um, compound that 10 times a year. So what we're gonna do is here's your interest rate. So let me underline this. So here's your interest rate right here as a decimal point one. And then you're going to put this number of times frequency is going to be this exponent. So then we'll type that into our calculator and we're going to have 2.5937 um, dollars. So two dollars and like 59 cents after that one. Next time we have five percent. So again, 5% as a decimal is that 0.05. And then this time it's going to be calculated 20 different times throughout the year. So that'll be our exponent. And if we do that, we end up with 2.65330. Um, because I guess they want us to do five decimal places. So let me give you one more up here also. Um, but so $2.65 essentially. So then for this next one, 1% um, a year. So, right, we'll have 1 times the 1 plus this as a decimal. So that's going to be 0 0.01. And then the number of times calculated is 100. So there's our expression. And what we would get back for this is 2.70481. Next one, we would have one, so one dollar times one plus the rate, and so that's going to be 0 0.005, and then to the 200th power this time, and that's going to give us back 2.71152. Next one at 0.1% interest, so as a decimal, that's 0 0.001, and then we're going to do this 1,000 times. So then this one's going to give us 2.71692 when we type it into our calculator. Next one at 0.01%. So 1 times 1 plus that 0.01% as a decimal. So 0 0.0001 and this time to the 10,000th. This is going to give us 2.71815. And then finally at 0.001%, so we'd have this expression, 1 um, plus 0 0.00001, and then to the 10,000th again. 
And this one's going to be 2.71. Um, oh, and this should say 100,000. So I don't know why that says 10,000, but this should say 100,000. So put 100,000 up here. And that would be 2.71827. So predict whether the account value will be greater um, than $3 if there's an option for 0.0001% interest. So if we do another row in this column a million times a year. And it's appearing like no, because, right, it's getting closer and closer to this 2.71827. So it looks like it's getting closer to that number E, okay? So no appears to be approaching. Oops. Yep. Okay. So approaching like 2.718. And then you could actually try this. And if you, t if you did this in your calculator, so you did one times one plus 0 0.00001 and then to the one millionth, um, what you would get back for that is 2.71828. And so definitely didn't go above $3. And then what do you notice about the value of the account as the interest rate get smaller and the frequency compounding gets larger. And so, like we said, it's getting closer and closer to 2.718, which is the number E. Number five, the function F is given by this function, which is what we basically just did on the last problem. So how do the values of F behave for small positive and large positive values? So for small um, positive values, that's what we just did on the last screen, right? So if this was one tenth or 0.1, then this was one divided by 0.1 or 10. Or if this was 0 0.01, meaning one one hundredth, then one over that was a hundred and so on. So we did this in the last screen and we found out that this is going to approach um, E, okay, or go towards E. And if we put in large positive numbers, then this is going to approach um, one. So if you put in like one plus 1,000, then this is going to be the 0.001 or 1 1,000th. Um, and if you kept this going, you put in like 10,000 here, then this would be 0 0.0001 or 1 10 thousandth, and these are going to approach one. So they're just going to get closer and closer to one. Number six, since 1992, the value of homes in a neighborhood are doubled every 16 years. The value of one home in the neighborhood was $136,500 in 1992. What is the value of the home in dollars in the year 2000? Um, and so when we take a look at this, so this says doubles every 16 years. So from 1992 to 2000, that's eight years. So that's not going to be one full doubling, right? So when we do this, we're going to do our initial value doubles every 16 years. So this is eight out of those 16 years or one half you could put up there as well. And so if you type that into your calculator, you'll find out that the value of this home is $193,040.15 after half of the doubling rate. So and write an equation that represents the growth in housing value of a function in uh, time in T years since 1992. So we'll um, do a function of time. And then we have our initial rate here of 136,500. And then it doubles every 16 years. So if we're doing it in years, we want to put that divided by 16 so that we're in every one year. So if we put in one, it'd be one sixteenth of a doubling factor or two sixteenths, three sixteenths, and so on. So write an equation that represents the growth in the housing value as a function of decades. 
Okay, so now if we're doing decades, okay, again, we still have our initial value of 136,500. We still have our growth factor of two, but now this time we want decades. So remember that 16 years in decades, okay, decades is every 10 years. So you divide this by 10, that's every 1.6 decades. So then we'd have D divided by 1.6 to, to put this down into each decade. Now use one of your equations to find the home value in dollars after 15 decades. So if we've written it in decades, then we might as well use the decade um, equation, but I'll show you both. So then this is 136,500 times two to the 1.5 divided by 1.6. And then this is going to give you 261,425.70. So that's going to be um, the new um, growth or the new value of the house. So if you were going to use the years, you'd have to do 1.5 as years. So 1.5 decades is 15 years. So then you'd get 136,500 times 2 to the 15 divided by 16, which again is this exact same thing. This is just 1.5 divided by 1.6. 15 divided by 16 is that same decimal. So this is going to give you the exact same value as long as you use your equations correctly. Number seven, write two equations, one in exponential form and one in logarithmic form to represent each equation. Use a question mark for the unknown value. So part A, what exponent, what exponent do we raise the number five and get 625? So for this one, you're going to have what number do we raise 5 to? Okay, so 5 to what exponent is 625? And so that would be an exponential form. For logarithmic form, we'd be saying log base 5 of 625 is what number? So those are going to be the two forms for that sentence. What is the log base 3 of 27? So log base 3 of 27 equals what? So then in exponential form, a log base 3 means 3 to what power gives us 27? Number 8, Claire says that log of 0.1 equals negative 1. Kieran says that log of negative 10 equals negative 1. Do you agree with either of them? Explain your reasoning. So let's take a look here. So remember, this is a base 10. So essentially what Claire is saying is 10 to the negative 1 is equal to 0 0.1. And if we think of 0 0.1 as a fraction, that's 1 tenth. And then 1 tenth as an exponent is 10 to the negative 1 power. So this is good. Claire is correct. Over here, what Kieran is saying is 10 to the negative 1 is equal to negative 10. And we know that that's false because we know that a number brought to an exponent is never going to be negative. So he would be incorrect.